Hi guys, what's good? I know I've gone MIA for a minute. Um, yeah, I've been busy with school, with work, with a whole lot of things trying to drain my energy, pull me down. But yo, I had to do this one for you guys because uh, I got quite a number of people asking me what we do, what our challenges are and all of that. So we just decided to put together this one for you so um, you can learn some of the challenges you face as a young farmer in Ghana. Yeah, so um, are you sure you want to know some of the challenges we face? You sure? You sure? Okay, there you go. Yeah, so as I said, this video is by popular request. So don't forget to like and subscribe down below. Yeah, so farmers go through terrible road networks to get to their farms. Most farm roads are in deplorable conditions. They are not asphalted, they are not nice roads, nicely paved roads where you can simply drive your car to and, and all of that. Um, with farmland, at some times of the season, you can hardly even use your car over there. You might find, you have to find alternative routes or alternative transportation or um, transportation systems to get over there. So um, at this time of our season, we have to use a motorbike to get to our farms. In fact, that's more accessible and more convenient for us. Um, we, I don't know about farmlands down south, but most farmlands in the north are really in um, remote areas. And so you have to find alternative routes and um, alternative um, transportation systems to get to your farmlands. Even sometimes some people even have to park at a distance and walk all the way to their farmlands. Yeah, so with our farms, we have to go through um, a series of difficulties to get there. We have to pass through um, water, I don't know whether to call them streams, rivers, <laughs> yeah, or a pool, just the, mostly is a pool of water, a pool of stagnant water we have to pass through just to get to the field. Um, these deplorable roads are sometimes very, very discouraging, but um, our passion and our drive leads us to crossing these waters. And sometimes, in fact, we have to be mechanics, yes because um, our bikes do break down and all of that and we have to fix them and then um, continue. But you know what, I fixed this. Yes, this bike, I fixed it before we were able to continue. <laughs> yes, I did. Before the season started, Northman Farms put together, now we had to put, put together a farmhouse, yes, for relaxation and then um, for the farm manager and then um, to supervise activities carried out on the field. Yeah, so he has to um, go there and uh, mostly when farmers, uh, when laborers are on the field doing some work so he can supervise them and also it, it creates shelter when it's raining, um, the workers can rush into the rooms, relax or when they are tired they can also get some uh, shade to relax and get back to work. So let's dive straight into business, let's um, talk to the team members, let's hear what they encountered, what some of the challenges um, the face wear and all of that. So let's talk to some of the team members and hear what they've got for us. But before that, hey, if you haven't liked and subscribed, just do so. Thank you. Welcome to Northman Farms. I'm Fidelis Akidam, the CEO. This year has been very challenging for farmers. We faced a lot of issues during the cropping season. And some of the issues included the high price of input prices, fuel prices, high cost of machinery, labor, and all the activities we run here. With all these challenges, we were able to sail through through hard work, teamwork, perseverance, and strategic partnerships. This year, we expanded our fields and this really increased our cost of production. We did 120 acres of maize and 180 acres of soya bean. Last year, the price for fertilizer, MPK, was 100 CDs for 50 kg. But this year, we are buying 50 kg for 320. 
which are, so you can see that the price has really gone up and this actually affected our cost of production because we needed more to do less when i think about it my head my head eh? my brain wants to scatter the fertilizer prices are just like it's crazy you know what it's crazy and my projection is that next year is going to be worse in fact this is not even about projection it's obvious see the hikes in the dollar the dollar is running like you say in both and fertilizers are purchased in dollars so imagine if um they import fertilizers next season how much will we buy fertilizer for if we are buying fertilizer for 320 this year next year you can just imagine how much 50 kg is going to be so we have to employ other you know other systems of farming i think we should equally start looking at organic fertilizers yes i think organic fertilizers is equally the way to go there are companies that um are having organic fertilizers i think um you can hit me up i would introduce you to some companies that have organic fertilizers that you can introduce to your farms um i i know some people that introduced organic fertilizers to their farms this this year and uh, they are giving good testimonies so i think um probably next year we'll also dedicate a portion of our field to try some of these organic fertilizers and guess what northman farms has a new member on board we have a new team member on board Yes, we have a senior, 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 senior most agronomist. <laughs> he has a lot of knowledge in agriculture and he'll be um, helping to educate all of us on some of the agronomic um, involved in farming and what we need to know. So let's hear from him. My name is Ezekiel Bila, the agronomist for Northman Farms. This year, we planted two varieties of maize, uh, pioneer and then lake. And as for soya bean, we, are, we did uh, janguma and fever varieties. Actually, we decided to go for these particular varieties based on certain factors. And that has to do with the yielding potentials of each variety and then its ability to resist certain climatic conditions such as drought and diseases. So as you can see, these are two cups of lake variety from different sections of this, the field. Uh, in fact, a particular section of the field was applied fertilizer twice uh, and the other didn't. This was as a result of uh, the fact that we started some section and at a point we, our fertilizer couldn't, and it didn't reach and we had to postpone and then come in again. And so at the end of it all, a particular section of the field actually had fertilizer twice, but another section had once. And this really explained the variation in the curves in my hand. But at the point when it was time to apply fertilizer at this part of the field, we really had issues with rain, saturation rain and moisture level within the soil wasn't encouraging fertilizer application and so we have to have to delay applying fertilizer and that all contributed to uh, the kind of uh, variation in our our yield this the, this season rainfall pattern was not really encouraging it really had a lot of negative impact on on us as farmers and uh, as a model farm that is uh, coming up to be a learning center and of course a steady environment for a, for projects. The unstability of uh, the climate doesn't really help most of this project and uh, are looking at alternatives, alternative ways to kind of maybe use to, to mitigate the effect of climate change on the soil, I mean on our falls. We are looking at uh, an irrigation form of system that we can exploit, yeah, I mean, can be brought in here to help even with dry season production. Apart from that, we are also taking into consideration the, uh, to inculcate this system of uh, biochar system of production on the field. And this biochar of a thing is capable of supporting 
swell in terms of uh, water holding capacity, in terms of uh, nutrients improvement, in terms of soil aeration, and it's very good for uh, soil such as this. And so if we, if, we, if, if we are able to employ this technology on this field, it will be a better place to be, not just for our generation, but even in the future generations to come. I told you, I told you, I told you, this guy has a lot of material, a lot of material here. A lot, a lot. I promise to let him tell you more about biocha and tell you more about conservation agricultural practices that we can employ on our farms to have sustainable agriculture and that will boost our yields and also, in fact, reduce the headlock, the hike of fertilizer prices on us. As you can see, North Bank Farms has grown. We just didn't start from 100 acres, 50 acres and all of that. There was a time we had only 10 acres, we had only 3 acres, we had only 5 acres. I just want to tell you that you don't need to start big. You can start small. You can start with an acre or two. Learn from all your mistakes before you expand. It's not about extensification. It's not about having 50 acres, 100 acres. But then, it's about doing the right thing. It's about doing the right agricultural practices. Just as you saw, the field where we couldn't apply second fertilization, so we did only one fertilization, the crops were looking miserable. They were looking like this, a kitty burger. But fields where we had all the right agronomic practices, applied fertilizer at the right time, applied two fertilizers, basil and top dressing, you saw the yields. So, um, as we said, our fields are equally demonstration fields. We are trying to educate farmers and also do trials to see what works best. So we are employing um, funders, we are employing private sector people, anybody. We are open for strategic partnerships. So if you believe you could partner with us to come up with the best practices for the youth, to help the youth to engage into agriculture, we are happy to receive you. And we are happy to work with you and to give our ultimate best. I'm Clever Dapu, Head of Operations for Northman Farms. Um, this year has really been tough, tough, but as always, we've, we've been able to strive through. One of the major challenges we faced this year was uh, the, in, uh, the increase in operation costs. Uh, one, the crop budget, for instance, had increased from like 1,000 from the previous year to 2,500 for soya and from 2,000 Ghana cities to 3,500 for an acre of maize. Uh, it has really been tough and this majorly was uh, attributed to uh, fertilizer prices, which we have seen rise drastically over 200% increment from the previous season. That's even a sub for subsidized fertilizer, which was also limited. But another challenge was uh, labor. With this location, it's difficult to find labor. So I think the SWAT has even drive our money a mechanization drive. So that's why we've moved from uh, manual to mechanized farming. As you can see, we are almost due for harvesting because our crops are drying up. And with that, we are already pushing measures in place for, like, for harvesting to take place. Currently, our machinery are on standby and we are also trying to get labor as well because in this part of the country, it's actually difficult to get combines at this period because there are a few combines and there are a lot of people who want to use it. Uh -huh. So there's that struggle to get it. So currently we are already doing making those preparations. Making those preparations because with soya, as you can see, if we don't move in quickly, everything will shatter. And that's a major loss. For service losses are a big issue in this part of the world. And that's what we are looking at because mostly people look at what you put on the farm. You can put good things on the farm, but at the end, if you don't manage to post harvest losses well, you have a big issue. So this is what we are trying to do at Northman Farm in order to maximize our profits at the end of the season. Thank you. Harvesting, 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 harvesting. You know that's always the time farmers smile because they see the fruit of their labor. Yes. 
um, agriculture gives joy. There is joy in agri. And as he said, you heard him, post harvest laws is uh, a major issue in this country. If you can follow all your best agronomic practices, all your best farm procedures and harvest, but if you don't have good post-harvest measures, you will not be able to get anything. You will not be able to count the number of bags you respected. So post-harvest laws is a major issue in this country. And so um, farmers, because of lack of machinery, go through a lot of um, difficulties when it's time for harvesting. Yes, yeah, so um, we would we would we would dedicate another episode to talk more on post harvest losses. But this is the time of the season where farmers are happy. I'm also predicting that the prices of maize next year is going to be crazy. During the lean season, we might be buying maize twice the price we are buying it now, and you might even have money for maize and you wouldn't get maize to buy. This is a prediction. This is because. Fertilizer prices were so high that a lot of farmers could not apply the right quantity of fertilizers to their fields. So because of that, the yields per acreages are going to be low this year. You saw our fields, even some portions where we couldn't do two applications because of certain factors like rainfall and also the hikes in prices. I'm not going to lie, I'm not going to say we have the money. We don't. Yeah, because of the hikes in prices, we couldn't apply two applications. We only did basal application, no top dressing. And you could see how the grains were. Imagine a farmer's field that has all his farm or all his yields looking so smallish and so tiny like that. That's 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 really really going to be sad. So if you have money, I'm advising you, I'm giving you a tip. This one is free apple. Buy maize, store and sell later, and you will never regret it. But remember, when you sell, send me Momo. Send me Momo. So agriculture is not as easy as we always think. Um, it also has its various challenges, just like any other business. However, with perseverance and hard work, you should be able to sail through all the challenges that comes with it. As you can see at Northman Farms, we are striving hard, doing all we can, doing our best, learning from our mistakes, to come out with best solutions that would improve crop yield. You heard some of the challenges that were outlined, cost of fertilizer, cost of inputs, cost of labor. So you can imagine a smallholder farmer who cannot go mechanical. How do you think this farmer will strive through all these challenges to come out with good yields? Agriculture is becoming a challenge and we as a people should think about various strategies to make it more attractive to the youth. Because a lot of people ask me questions about our break, the young people want to do agri, the young people want to venture into agriculture, they want to come up with sustainable ways to increase their packets. But how do they do this? When the cost of fertilizer keeps skyrocketing, cost of seeds keeps skyrocketing, cost of labor skyrocketing. How do we face these challenges? How do we help the youth to make agriculture attractive to us? If you also have intentions of farming next year, in fact, I just employ you to start saving. Start saving now, 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 now because this is a prediction that the cost of um, weedicides, pesticides, in fact, even seeds would heighten because the dollar is running. As long as the dollar is rising, everything will rise because most of these things are being imported. Let's say they see we have Sari and all that who are developing um, seeds and all of that. So probably we might even have, but you know Ghana, even, even if the item is not, <laughs> uh, is not in dollars or so it's not even imported, as long as the dollar is rising, everything rises. So I just employ you to start saving now and start researching on what you want to do, on the crop you want to do. You should research on the seeds you want to use and all of that. It's very important for good yield. And remember, I always stress on this. It's not about extensification. It's not about having large acreages, but then it's about intensification. Doing the right thing at the right time. And with God, you would have a bumper harvest. See you in the next video. I'm always happy to be with you guys, honestly. And then um, you can keep your comments coming, keep your questions coming. And we are always, 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 always ready and available to help support you. Yes, yeah, so um, if you have any questions, if we are also open for partnerships. In fact, I have to hammer on that one. Partnerships. But Ghanaians, we don't like partnerships. <laughs> 
we don't we hate partnerships but we are not man farms are open for partnerships if you have any partnerships if you have any way we can support you or you or you can support us in fact our doors are always open let's sit on a round table and see how best we can have a win-win situation for you and i see you in our next episode adios ciao